The mission of the HSS Imaging Department is to answer relevant questions that confound our clinical colleagues. We take their worst nightmares, the problems they can't solve, and come up with an imaging solution to solve them. I saw the ankle images, they were spectacular. We recruit co-investigators from the departments of rheumatology, from orthopedics, from pathology, where it's a really true multidimensional research effort that is always translatable to the human condition. We have an educational mission and we have a whole bunch of folks that are put together for medical students, from fellows, for residents, orthopedic, rheumatology, radiology as well, a large educational mission. HSS stays in the forefront of MRI research by developing new techniques, not only for their novelty, but also to understand the clinical translation of these techniques so that we can use them uh, for the patients when they come to the hospital. We know that the durability and the material properties of this are not going to match that of hyaline cartilage. At MR, we've been able to develop techniques that are now considered somewhat revolutionary. The imaging around metal, for example, using MR. We've been a leader in what's called parametric mapping, means by which to use MR metrics and data to non-invasively tell about tissue biochemistry. One of the current techniques that I'm working to develop specifically for peripheral nerve imaging is called diffusion tensor imaging. Our tr traditional MRI evaluates the nerve based on its signal and morphology and course. Diffusion tensor imaging can help by another layer can assess nerve integrity. So when we see a nerve injury, it can evaluate the extent or severity of the nerve injury. And by assessing severity of injury, it can help with preoperative planning. We've also come up with what are called pulse sequences, the means by which we drive the MR that were developed at Special Surgery in collaboration with scientists at GE Healthcare. They are available at Special Surgery as prototypes years before they're released as product to the public. We have a number of NIH grants, one of which is to use MRI as a biomarker to predict which individuals are going to have premature failure of their total hip replacement. We have another grant where we are evaluating younger individuals who have had uh, transplantation of their meniscus so that we can predict their functional outcome at six months and one year postoperatively. We have some more recently acquired grants through ultrasound as well, educational grants for new and really fun ultrasound techniques. There is this uh, quantitative imaging modality that ultrasound um, uh, affords, and it's called elastography. And this is a non-invasive ultrasound technique that allows us to tell about stiffness of tissue. How about here? All right. Several years ago, the only type of elastography you could do was something called compressive elastography, where you actually had to push down on the tendon or the ligament with your transducer and try and measure the, the compliance. And that's been largely replaced now by something that's called shear wave, which means you just put the transducer on the target of interest, the machine shoots out a sound beam, listens for its echo, and then can calculate the stiffness of that tissue. Now that we have brand new machines with shear wave elastography, we're taking the research to the next step, looking at how the Achilles tendon degenerates. They're hoping to expand that um, to look at uh, uh, tendon healing in a patient who's had a tendon repair. All these projects always come out of a direct clinical question in my mind, which is, why are we doing it like this? Or do we need to do it like this? Um, because if we could do it better, then it helps the patient. The future is going to be linking imaging to what's called material properties, functional capacity of tissue. So we know that the tendon is torn, but what we want to be able to predict is once that's repaired, how much load will that hold? How will the patient function in six months? What kind of activities will they do? So we're really linking imaging to functional capacity, to how the patient is able to perform. So you're going to get better from this. If you don't push the envelope, then it gets kind of boring. We are going to keep pushing the envelope. 